I think she's honestly probably the most messed up character I've ever read from the point of view from. It just doesn't feel compatible with my brain. That's just a me problem. This is pretty gnarly. Basically at this point I will do anything for dopamine. Come along. Hi, I'm Sam. There's quite literally no one asking me to do this, but I have not been feeling very well lately. And on top of that, I am also grappling with the news of the recent death of Booktube's beloved Pax Panic. And you may have seen the post I made on my community tab trying to summarize what Pax meant to me. And I think that's pretty much where I'm going to leave it for now. I don't really want to try and articulate in front of the camera what I'm feeling, but I am really missing her and I'm really angry that she was taken so soon. So I've been really trying to actively help myself feel better and sometimes that means putting in a lot of work and forcing yourself to do stuff instead of just laying around. Which is not to say that if you're sick you shouldn't rest, but I think for me right now what I need is to throw myself into things that I know bring me joy and be a lot more active about my self-care. So I've really been trying to turn to books, as I often do during times of stress or any negative events in my life. So today I kind of just wanted to do an easy video. You know, I have all of these ideas for videos, but I just don't feel like I can give my all for those right now, so I want to wait until I am feeling a little bit better. But I thought it would be nice today to force myself to create. And even if this video doesn't see the light of day, I think forcing myself to shower, brush my teeth, put on some makeup, and distract myself by talking about some books that I'm currently reading couldn't hurt, you know? So let's just talk about some of the books that I've been reading to try and force myself to break out of my depressive episode. Okay, so the first book I'm reading, I've literally been reading since April because it's a short story collection and I am notoriously bad at getting through those quickly. So that is Knock 'em Stiff by Donald Ray Pollock. I am like that far through, so not even that far. And I don't know what it is. Short story collections just really take it out of me. I don't know why I keep trying to come back to them, but I am really enjoying this despite how long it's taking me to get through it. This is basically just like all of these depraved stories about this community in Knock'em Stiff, Ohio. And it features a cast of recurring characters who are really poor, depraved, violent. So yeah, I talked a little bit about this in my Seattle vlog because that is when I started reading this. And yeah, really liking it so far, but short story collections aren't really slump busters for me. If anything, I have to really start them when I'm at like the height of a reading period because they often kind of bog me down a little bit, but that's just a me problem. So I always like to at least have one short story collection going and then usually one physical book and one audiobook. But right now I have two physical books that I'm trying to work through, but one I'm like 99% sure I'm going to DNF. But the one that I really want to try and get through is Cunning Folk by Adam L. G. Neville. The basis of the story is this family buys this, you know, broken down house next to this weird couple and the man who owned the house before them killed himself in the house and that's why they were able to get it for so cheap so they kind of pick up where he left off building the house or like renovating the house while navigating their financial issues and the increasingly weird behavior of their elderly neighbors so this one I have been kind of reading on a dual basis. So I was able to get the audiobook, but I wasn't loving the audiobook. So then I switched to my physical copy. So I'm about halfway through and I chose this because I thought this was going to be kind of like a slam dunk for sure slump buster, but I don't know, something about it is not really vibing with me. The gears aren't meshing, you know, it's like they're like kind of grinding. And when I read the writing, it kind of seems like I'm 
it just doesn't feel compatible with my brain. I think the writing is just a little bit too, a little bit too overwrought for me. You know, I think he could stand to edit down a little bit, but I think that's really just his style and some people seem to really like that. But I really want to finish this because I think it has good bones and yeah, it's full horror, which I typically really like. So yeah, I don't know if it's maybe just because I am like in a really bad place mentally that I'm not enjoying this as much as I want to, you know, like my head and my heart aren't in it, but I'm already like so into it that I really do just kind of want to finish it because I really would like the dopamine of finishing a book on my physical TBR, whether that means moving it to my bookshelf to keep or reselling it for money. Basically, at this point, I will do anything for dopamine, so I'm gonna finish this book. And then the next book that I'm, well, I was trying to read a physical copy of, but I am pretty sure I'm gonna DNF because it's just not as relatable to me as I thought it was going to be. So that is How Not to Kill Yourself by Clancy Martin. I was hoping that this would be, you know, insight into a person's mind who's struggling with suicidal thoughts because I think that I find a lot of comfort in reading about and talking to other people who also have like mental health issues similar to mine but I don't want to dissuade you from reading this if this sounds interesting to you because this is mostly about the author's own experience with suicide attempts and his case for destigmatizing depression and suicidal ideation which I'm all on board with but I think where he kind of lost me is that he's an individual who has been struggling with suicidal thoughts since he was a very small child so I think he said his first suicide attempt was when he was like six his first memory is of wanting to die so I guess like the context of his illness and his headspace is different than mine is so I don't think I'm gonna get as much out of this as I was hoping and it's really long and I'm already trying to push through one other book. I don't want all of the things that I'm reading to feel like I'm forcing it so I'm just gonna return this to the library and let go and let God. And then my other current read before I get into a few reads that I am going to be reading next to hopefully break my slump is Tampa by Alyssa Nutting. This I was also able to get on audiobook and while the audiobook has been really fantastic I also kind of regret it because this is honestly one of the most disturbing books I've ever read. In short, this is about a 26 year old woman who becomes an eighth grade teacher for the express purpose of grooming and assaulting 14 year old boys. You know, obviously that synopsis sounds really disturbing and really messed up, but I didn't expect it to be as graphic as it has been, but I really am enjoying Alyssa Nutting's writing and despite the really insanely heavy disturbing subject matter and having to read from the point of view of such a messed up character. I think she's honestly probably the most messed up character I've ever read from the point of view from. But despite all of that, there are still moments that are like almost towing the line of being actually humorous. But then that's also kind of like makes me feel even more disturbed because I'm like, how could I be finding any little glimmer of joy in this story? I think what Alyssa Nutting's doing is really interesting. And I'm actually really enjoying that so far. But yeah, the audiobook, it's nothing against the narrator. She's actually fantastic, but it's just extremely uncomfortable scenes to have narrated to you. So I for sure will be finishing that. I honestly will probably finish that in the next couple days. So that's what I'm currently reading. And now I have a few that I really want to get to next. And kind of my go-to whenever I'm in a reading slump is just to try and read manga. Because manga is like such a comfort to me. I can read one in like less than an hour. So then you have that sense of accomplishment of getting one under your belt. The first two that I want to read are actually from the library. So I was able to find Shintaro Kago's Super Dimensional Love Gun, and I've really been enjoying his work lately. So I just recently read him for the first time, and his very surreal art style really caught my eye, and it's just so unique. Uh, I'm flipping through trying to find a couple pages I can show you, and geez, this is pretty gnarly. Ugh, I can't show you like anything from this. It's like Junji Ito if it was a little bit more surreal, a little bit more body horror in the sense of like biological processes, if that makes sense. Junji Ito really likes to manipulate the body in horrifying ways, and Shintaro Kago, I think, likes to amplify biological processes that we typically think of as unsavory to kind of get that body horror scare. Just ready to have a goofy, silly, gory time. 
And then the next library book that I picked up is Be Very Afraid of Kanako Inuki. And this I kind of saw bouncing around on Goodreads. I actually don't really know much about what it's about, but the art style looks really cool and it looks spooky. So it's six hair-raising stories selected for this collection feature an array of unnerving characters and scenarios brought to life in Inuki's signature art style. In the tradition of Junji Ito, Kazuo Umez, Shintaro Kago, and Junko Mizuno. So that sounds pretty good to me. I am always down for some horror manga, and I hope that this helps bring me out of my slump. And then the last one that I really want to read, and this one I like know I'm gonna love because it's the third in a series that I've been reading. If this doesn't break my slump, then I don't know what will. But that is PTSD Radio, Omnibus Volume 3. So I've already talked pretty extensively about this series, but this is a really cool collection of Japanese folk horror stories and the art style is just really really cool really really creepy and the stories are really short and have all these recurring characters that are kind of like interwoven so yes I'm very excited to get into this one I've talked about this a lot so I'm not going to really belabor the point but this is a series I'm really loving and if you like manga or horror or both you should really check out this series hopefully this breaks my slump so those are all the books I'm currently reading and planning on reading to overcome a ye old reading slump. I'm going to try and force myself to keep creating because I do think that it, it does make me feel better. So I really would like to do the mid-year freakout tag. I already have scripts written up for a part two of the book recs based on your favorite movie and book recs or like which literary character are you based on your zodiac sign. So I really do want to get to those. It just felt inauthentic to try and force those when I am not feeling well and grieving. So I really just appreciate you guys sticking with me. I feel like I've had a lot of ups and downs since I started this channel and you know this isn't my first depressive episode it won't be my last that's just kind of part of the territory I promise I'm really trying to get better so I really appreciate you guys supporting me and sticking with me if this is the first super blumper video you're seeing uh, I, I'm sorry <laughs> please go watch some of my other videos where I'm feeling a bit better I promise the energy is, is usually higher but otherwise uh, you can like this video if you want comment subscribe if you want let me know what are some books that you have read that have successfully busted your slumps give me some book recs what you've been reading what you've been loving hope you guys have been taking care of yourselves and i'll see you next time okay love you guys bye